Why do the occlusal contacts in the full arch scan data change significantly between the pre-scan data and the post-processed scan data? The first question is regarding an occlusion issue. Daniel noticed that the occlusal contact in the pre-scan data changes significantly after processing, and he is wondering why the occlusion always differs between pre- and post-processing. He shows what his occlusion settings screen looks like, and I assume that he wants to adjust these settings to ensure minimal change. It's obvious that there is a significant difference between pre- and post-processing, with the processing resulting in an overbite occlusion while that did not exist in the pre-processed image. Then how can you adjust the degree of processing to get the desired level of occlusion? Today, we will prepare a few slides going over everything you need to know about the processing of occlusion scan data. 10. Did you ever get an unexpected change in the occlusion scan during the post-process stage? Yes, in my experience, this happens more in flash scans than in quadrant scans, especially when the bite is captured on both sides. It also seems to happen more in patients with heavy clenching as their bite tends to deepen. Oh, I see what you mean. This is likely because if the patient bites down hard, the PDL gets compressed, which affects the height of the teeth and gums. This in turn will lead to more compensation during the post-process stage. This is known as the overbite phenomenon. We discussed this in a session last March, but recently there have been additional questions on this topic. His main question was asking how to practically apply the occlusion adjustment option given that each patient bite force varies. Since the accuracy of the bite in the scan data is critical, we need to ensure that the process is as delicate tuned as possible like on sound engineer tuning music. To deeply investigate, we prepared a special session on the best way to perform occlusion adjustment. Let's watch the solution video together. In conventional bite registration, errors can occur when the patient bites down in the wrong position or when the bite material was not properly trimmed before mounting. However, such errors are naturally avoided in digital methods where impression material does not exist in the interocclusal space. One of the inherent advantages of the digital impression method compared to the analog method is that the user can verify whether the occlusal bite has been accurately captured and can instantly adjust the bite intensity to the desired level. Because the user has so much control over every step, we can avoid uncertainties with proper use of the digital method. This study found that in 93% of single crown treatments using digital impressions, no occlusal adjustments were necessary. The very purpose of using digital methods is to achieve such near-perfect treatment outcomes. However, in reality, we sometimes encounter prosthetics with unexpectedly high or low occlusion in our daily practice. What are the factors that cause these occlusal discrepancies? So today, we are going to discuss in detail how to adjust occlusion for optimal use of the Medit scanner. We've broken it down into three sub-questions for clarity. First, we will talk about the mechanism of occlusion post-processing. Second, we will show the actual occlusal adjustment process through a real case where the patient has a heavy bite force. Lastly, we will look at how AI can help in finding the optimal bite. By utilizing these three ideas, you will be more confident when taking bite scans. Let's start with post-processing. We are revisiting a topic we have discussed in our March session, but we have added some additional notes. Here we can see a diagram showing two examples of how post-processing can create what appears to be an error. This is known as overbite phenomenon. When taking a bite scan, the patients will bite down, which will compress the PDL space, which can deform the height of teeth. Scan programs will try to correct for this by realigning arch data, but it could overcompensate, creating penetration that will not happen in reality. To address this, Many scanner manufacturers provide adjustment options that allow clinicians to customize and adjust the alignment levels. In Medit's case, they have included a convenient toolbar-style interface within its settings to facilitate this process. This is a good example of how post-processing can lead to unwanted result. A user scanned a plaster model where the posterior teeth were not in contact, 
and after processing, the result showed a deformed occlusion that differed from the actual position. This is what we would expect in our result if we understand the mechanism of post-processing. The scan program by default is programmed to account for PDL space, so it treated this plaster model as if it had PDL space, and it produced an overcompensated result. So as suggested by the Medit support team in the response, we can resolve the issue by moving the toolbar to minimize the compensation level. Keep in mind, you can change settings to adjust the alignment to your specific needs. The most commonly used option is the toolbar, where we can adjust the intensity of the occlusion. This sets the default configuration. The further you move the bar to the left, the less occlusion there is, and the further you move it to the right, the more occlusion there is. In other words, moving it to the left means that the amount of occlusal change during the processing will produce less compensation. So in the previous example, with the cast model, no compensation is needed, which means the bar should be set to the left. Now we are looking at how this affects an actual patient case using each of these three settings. It means we can play with these settings to suit clinician preference or for patient variance. Now, this raises a question. How can we adjust the occlusal force for each patient since every patient has a different bite force? Our clinic found that we were getting uneven results across our patients. As for Dr. Jang, since he dislikes uncertainty, he wanted to a way to minimize such variation in results. So he thought there was a need for standardization in terms of patient bite force and scan protocol. Our clinic came up with a way to achieve optimal occlusion by combining standardization and customization. For standardization, every scan follows the exact same protocol to minimize variation. As an example, Dr. Zhang prefers to have the patient support their jaw with their fist to ensure they bite down hard during the scan and the bar is set to the left. For customization, since every patient has a unique bite, we need to confirm the occlusal result for each patient. To facilitate this, Medit provides not only general setting options, but also a toolbar in the scan result window to adjust the occlusion on a case-by-case -case basis. This allows the immediate reflection of the patient's characteristics, in addition to the general preferences of the clinician. So how does Dr. Zhang handle this in actual clinical practice? For reasons unknown to the patient, Dr. Zhang shakes hands with him. What is he trying to do? He is attempting to roughly predict the patient's bite intensity through the strength of the handshake. In this case, Dr. Zhang predicted that the patient likely has a clenching habit based on his strong grip. Dr. Zhang then asks the patient to try occluding several times and takes pictures to record the bite using occlusal paper. This helps him understand the pattern of the occlusal points. As expected, the patient had a heavy bite, but Dr. Zhang does not adjust the general setting options. This is because it would be cumbersome to adjust the settings for each new patient. Instead, he instructs the patient to bite down more comfortably when scanning the bite. In addition, to standardize the procedure, Dr. Jang instructs him to support his jaw with his fist while biting down more lightly. Now the patient is ready for an accurate scan. Now, it's Chen's turn. Scan expert Chen begins the bite scan. With smooth and controlled movements, she completes the scan and reviews the results. She then compares it with the occlusal points from the pictures taken earlier to see if they match, and if necessary, she adjusts using the toolbar. If it adjusts correctly, the scan is complete. By making this process routine, the variation in occlusal points caused by differences in patient bite strength can be minimized, resulting in more stable scan outcomes. Even with this protocol, you may end up with undesired results. How would you deal with such uncertainty? Just ignoring the situation is not a good choice. But asking the patient to go through the process again would anger the patient. To avoid any hassle, you could also adjust the result arbitrarily on the design program. But this can also produce inaccurate prosthesis. Surprisingly, now we can utilize AI technology to solve this problem. We are now in an era where AI technology is being integrated into almost every field, and the same is being attempted in analyzing patient occlusion. This study explains the mechanism of how AI technology simulates and identifies the optimal occlusion state. If the occlusion has been properly captured, 
the technology can be used to correct the scan result. Remarkably, even in cases where the occlusion has been captured incorrectly or incompletely, the technology can predict and identify the correct occlusal state. This study shows us that iOS working in tandem with AI can significantly reduce the occlusal discrepancy. It means, if you are not too familiar with the manual adjustment of occlusion, you can utilize this technology to improve your scan result. The program used in the study is called ByteFinder, and as of this year, it has been integrated within the MedicScan program. As you can see on the screen, once the scan is complete, you just need to press the app's execute button, and within about 30 seconds, the AI analyzes the occlusion data on the server. After that, the program compares the optimal occlusion position it has found with the original file, allowing the user to select and use it. How incredible is this innovation? Even if a staff member accidentally captures a contactless occlusion, there's no need to recall the patient. The system finds the optimal occlusion, making it highly recommended for use in urgent situations. This is a summary of the entire process of handling and adjusting occlusion data. Initially, our clinic also felt that the results of occlusion recordings were inconsistent through the digital process, so we requested the remote lab to adjust it appropriately within the design program. However, we believe that relying on dental technicians like this introduces another layer of uncertainty. Naturally, the more reliable approach is to follow a standardized protocol for capturing occlusion scan data, then verify ourselves whether it matches the actual occlusal points in the patient's mouth before making adjustments and sending it off. It's true that at first, any protocol with an added inspection process seems complex and cumbersome. However, once you become accustomed to it, the time saved in the chair and the increased patient satisfaction will more than make up for it. This answers question number one.